Namaskar my dear students today in the quick review section we will be discussing a very important topic that is principles of tooth preparation we have already discussed the mechanical principles in the previous video today we will be discussing and covering the biological principles of tooth preparation now this topic is very important as many mcqs are framed from this topic a number of questions are asked in the viva when we show the when we show the tooth preparation to the invigilator and theory questions are also framed from this topic so let's begin So coming to the principles of tooth preparations first of all what is a tooth preparation it is a systematic and organized approach or a method to prepare the tooth so that it receives a restoration a crown okay now these principles can be categorized into three categories first is the biological principles second are the mechanical principles and third are the aesthetic principles the biological principles which affect the health of the oral tissues mechanical principles which affect the integrity and durability of the restoration and aesthetic principles which affect the appearance of the restoration now in this video we will be discussing the biological principles in detail so coming to the biological principles when we are talking about the biological principles we need to take care of the health of the biological tissues around the prepared tooth this include first the adjacent teeth which are present second is the soft tissue surrounding the uh, tooth to be prepared and third is the pulp of the tooth if it is a vital tooth then it becomes very very important let us discuss these things in detail first if we talk about the adjacent tooth adjacent tooth can be easily damaged during the tooth preparation so how to prevent the adjacent tooth first we can use a metal matrix band you know this will help that the burr will not touch the adjacent tooth second we can make use of the proximal enamel of the tooth we all know that the teeth are 1.5 to 2 mm wider at the contact area so this is how we can prevent the adjacent tooth next are the soft tissues damage of the soft tissues of the tongue and the cheeks it can be prevented by careful retraction now this can be done with the help of aspirator tip mouth mirror or a saliva ejector special care or greater care is needed to protect the tongue when we are preparing the lingual surfaces of the mandibular molars third is the dental pulp you know when we are preparing a vital tooth dental pulp is very very important it can be easily damaged by three things first the extreme temperature second the chemical irritation and third the microorganisms so these all three can cause irreversible pulpitis to a vital uh, abutment first is the temperature when we are preparing the tooth considerable heat is generated by friction the amount of the heat generated depends on first the excessive pressure second the higher rotational speed and third type shape and condition of the cutting instrument now how to prevent this heat generation or reduce this we use water spray you know water spray it removes the debris because the clogging it reduces the cutting efficiency and second it also prevents the desiccation of dentine which is a major cause of severe pulpal irritation special care is needed when we are preparing the grooves and the pin holes second is the chemical action the chemical action of various dental materials we are using that is the bases restorative resins solvents luting agents they can cause the pulpal damage how to prevent this cavity varnish and dentine bonding agent they can form an effective barrier and reduce the chemical action third is the bacterial action 
you know the palpal damage under the restoration is due to the bacteria that was either left behind or it gained access to the dentin because of the micro leakage so marginal adaptability of the restoration is very very important so that no micro leakage is present and second all carious lesion should be removed before placing the restoration because it serves as the foundation of the uh, prosthesis one more point that any indirect pulp capping is not recommended in the abutment that we are using it for the ext uh, extensive prosthodontic treatment next is the conservation of tooth structure whenever we are talking about the biological principles we are saying to conserve the tooth structure as much as possible now this can be done first by the use of partial coverage crowns rather than complete coverage restoration wherever possible second the preparation of the teeth should be minimal and that can be done with a minimal practical convergence angle in the conservation if we are talking about the tooth preparation the occlusal surface occlusal surface should be reduced following the anatomical planes as we can see in the picture it it will give a uniform thickness to the restoration second the preparation of the axial surface it should be uniformly and evenly removed while conservation of the tooth structure first of all if necessary tooth should be orthodontically repositioned it should not be over reduced to corrected stilting second selection of conservative margins should be uh, chosen okay but it should be compatible with the principles of the uh, tooth reduction third avoidance of unnecessary apical extension of the preparation we should remain supra gingival as possible first if we talk about the axial reduction in detail a crown should duplicate the contour and profile of a natural tooth until and unless we don't have to correct a malformed or a malposition tooth second always remember as we can see in the picture the under contour flat restoration is better than a over contour restoration which is very difficult to clean and difficult to manage If we talk about a all metal crown the finish line depth should be 0.3 to 0.5 mm and axial reduction of all metal crowns should be 0.5 to 0.8 mm Next we come to the occlusal reduction for the gold alloys there should be 1.5 mm of clearance on the functional cusp and 1 mm of clearance on the non functional cusp i hope you know the functional and the non functional the functional cusp are the palatal cusp of the maxillary molars and the premolars and the buccal cusp of the mandibular premolars and the molars the basic inclined plane of the occlusal surface should be duplicated so that adequate clearance is present as we can see in the picture the a part now if we see the b and the c the occlusal surface is flattened in the b the reduction is not sufficient so it will violate the mechanical principles and the c it has led to the over shortening of the pre uh, preparation leading or violating the biological principles coming to the functional cusp bevel very very important MCQs are also framed from this uh, topic. Functional cusp bevel is the integral part of the occlusal reduction. It is given on the lingual inclines of the maxillary lingual cusp and buccal inclines of the mandibular buccal cusp. From the name itself, it is given on the functional cusp bevel on the functional cusp. We can see in the picture. It should be 45 degree or parallel to the opposing surface, as we can see in the picture. Now. one more point that in the cross bite the functional cusp changes 
Now the question arises, what will happen if the functional cusp bevel is not placed? What will be the problems? First, as we can see in the B, that extreme thin casting will be present at the junction of the occlusal and the axial reduction shown by an arrow. Or what will happen if we lead, it will lead to the over taper of the uh, surface and this will lead to over contouring of the restoration and also the deflective occlusal contacts as we can see in C. Next, we come to the margin placement. Whenever we are preparing the tooth, we should uh, prefer supragingival margins wherever possible to make them more conservative and according to the biological principles. Now, what are the advantages of supragingival margin? First, they are easier to prepare accurately without any trauma to the soft tissue. Second, they can be situated on the hard enamel. Third, they can be easily finished and they are kept more easily they are uh, clean then impressions are more easily made with less potential for the soft tissue damage last but not the least that the restorations can be easily evaluated at the recall appointments You know, but there are certain clinical conditions or the indications where we have to give the subgingival margins. What are those conditions? First, if the dental caries, cervical erosions or restorations, they need to be extended. Uh, they are present subgingivally. Second, the proximal contact area, it extends to the gingival crest. There also we have to go subgingival. Third, where additional retention is required, the cervical occlusal length is less. The margin of the metal ceramic restoration sometimes has to be hidden because of the aesthetic reason. So there also we have to give subgingival margin. Root sensitivity, when it cannot be controlled by the conservative procedures, there we need to give the subgingival margins or the modifications of axial contour is uh, needed where there is uh, the malelang teeth are present. Now, when we are placing the subgingival margin, the location of the subgingival margin should be such that it follows the biological principles of tooth preparation. The extension of the margin to the epithelial attachment should be avoided. Second, the term biological width should not be violated. Margin should be at least 0.4 millimeter occlusal to the depth of the gingival crevice, as we can see in the picture. Next is the margin adaptation. Very, very important for the biological uh, principles. Margin is the junction, which is always a potential site for recurrent caries. Okay, this can be because of the dissolution of cements. So it is very, very important that it is nicely, completely adapted. A casting has to be made uh, fit with 10 micron and porcelain margin should fit uh, 50 micron according to the values. The prepared cervical margin, it should always follow the scalloped anatomy of the alveolar bone, the attachment and the gingival tissue. It should not be flattened. The most common error is to flatten the cervical margin in the interproximal area and this violates the biological width. Now let us just quickly summarize the biological principles. First of all, we should prevent any kind of damage to the adjacent tooth, the soft tissues surrounding the abutment, the pulp of the abutment, the vital abutment, you know, the increase in the temperature, the chemical or the bacterial invasion should be prevented. Next, we come to the conservation of the tooth structure whenever we are preparing it, uh, both axially and the occlusal preparation. Then the margin placement should be supragingival as much as possible. Next is the margin adaptation should be such that it does not lead to the recurrent caries. So that's all for this topic, my dear students. Please like and share this video with your friends and your juniors. If you have any kind of question, you can leave your questions in the comment section or any topics you want me to take, please leave in the comment section. Wish you success today and always.